Watch all the way to the end. Got some news about uh, free giveaways. Uh, so you gotta watch the end to hear what you gotta do to make sure that we can start giving this stuff away. Gonna have a lot of cool comics and some other stuff gonna be given away on the show. So stay tuned. So, so the new business model in the mall running well. It's been, so, been yes. So April 1st, I did it as also kind of an homage because April 1st, I wanted people to think, is Dennis actually going to open a store on April 1st? Is this an elaborate Dennis joke? Is he doing something <laughs> crazy and wacky? So I, I actually opened the store April 1st. I invited all my friends in March 31st to kind of get, get their opinion of it. And most of my comic retailer and comic collector fr friends were like, you... You, you don't have any new books here. <laughs> and and a couple of them were like, you son of a bitch. You figured out a way to not have to deal with Diamond. Right. And, and then they looked around and I had Beanie Babies in the front window. I had VHS and, B, uh, and DVD tapes on racks in the front window. I had 90s Hot Wheels cars and 90s action figures. I had Pokemon. I had old D&D &D dice sets. I had all of this merch, which was all stuff that was left over from my Amazon operation. Didn't go for enough to put on Amazon. Right. It sat for over 12 years of me selling on Amazon. This was all the stuff that was still left over. And, and I will tell you, Emmett, I don't know what you do. I, I'll share right now with, with the, your audience. We did over $10,000 in the first month and I thought we could do five or 6,000 a month. Yeah, that's and great. We and we haven't dipped below that without a single diamond bill. Right. Well, we, we run anywhere from three to eight. I haven't broke 10, maybe like one odd month here or there, but we're, we're about three, three to eight uh, a month, depending on what's the new stuff coming through. But you know, the profit margin on the new stuff sucks. So, no, and so let me explain, though, Emmett, let me explain my other mentality right, to this. Right. Since, since 2010, I have had this ghostly haunting idea in my head. And I'll, I'll simplify it for you. Avengers made a billion dollars. That's a hundred million people giving Disney $10 a piece to see their movie. Yep. Yep. That's a hundred million people. How many people read an Avengers comic book? Less than 70,000. A hundred thousand? Let's just, let's be generous. All right, hundred thousand. It's easy, easy math with a hundred. That's one person for every 1,000 people yeah. who saw the movie are, are fighting, we as comic retailers are fighting 1999 of us to get that one guy who's yep. going after the other 999 of them right me because my mall has a movie theater and and when they get out of that movie theater when they see thor or they see spider-man or they see any of the other movies dr strange they've never touched a comic book they don't they they didn't see lost boys and know where the comic book store is Right, right. Or there's a thing called, well, they, they might have watched Big Bang Theory, and that's what they think they have to go to. But when they come in, oh, look, it's a Doctor Strange comic over there. Hey, Billy, do you want a little Doctor Strange comic? Oh, they're $2 each or three for five. Billy, I'll buy you three Doctor Strange. Guess what that is? Guess what lesson I learned that from, Emmett? That was the handful of change my mom left on that piece of paper in 19. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have taken every lesson I've learned and I've poured it into this comic book store as a test of, can it be done? And I, I, I had no idea what your store does, Emmett, but I can tell you right now, get, make your store for the 999 that don't go to a comic book store. Right. Because that's our, that's the future of our market. If we get one of those people if we get one of those people, Emmett, if each one of us, 2,000 people, get one more person in, 
Right. That turns Avengers numbers from 100 to 200. Yep. And 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 that's what the industry needs to do, Emmett, is 100%. figure out one person for every thousand people that are currently shopping at a comic book store, we double our numbers. Well, we're going to have to. We've been we're going to have to. Comic book day for two, 20 years. That hasn't done it. Uh, my, my free comic book days are huge. Sometimes it's a week's, you know, we'll make a week's money in that day, right? Because it's that thing, but it's what gets them through the door for that is that free item. I save a lot of my free comics and give them out all the time. So every kid knows when they come in, you know, I have a bunch of free comics. They're going to get one. So I'm trying to make readers. For me, it's it, 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 it's not like Pokemon. Most of my Pokemon buyers, they don't play Pokemon. They collect the cards. Right. With comic books, kids, you got to get them to read. You can't, you're not getting them to speculate. You're not getting some seven-year-old kid to speculate. Oh, you should buy this Miles because it's got his sister in it. You know? Right. You know? And, and, and nobody's, here's the thing. Nobody buys for a reader taste test at $5 a piece. I mean, you know that. Right. Right. You you got to lure them in with a dollar. Right. Or $2. But almost or free. Marvel and DC have given up, pretty much given up making kids books. Unless it's a yeah. book book, like, uh, you know, I just, here's, here's a funny story and I'm not throwing them under the bus, but to me, one of the greatest fucking writers slash artists for kids, do you know who it is? Uh, the captain underpants guy. Well, no, well, uh, outside of our industry, oh. in our industry is art Balthazar. Uh, he did, uh, the, all of the kids books about the crypto animal. Oh the yeah. Animal. The DC pets. The DC Pets, the little digest thing. Yep. I was just at Chicago Fan Expo. I ran into Art Balthazar and his family when they were shopping on Sunday. He wasn't a guest there. <laughs> that's 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 the future of our entire industry, and he wasn't invited to a comic book show. Right. He's wandering around the comic book show, digging through toy bins, finding little loose action figures to play with with his kids. <laughs> that's that's what our focus is right now yeah yeah so to, to 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 culminate i built a 90s comic book store 90s themed comic book store kind of like your retro arcade right right i built it in a mall that was last great in the 90s and it went down but it started to come back up right. i'm the destination in that mall i'm a destination in that mall movie theater comic book store they put me within the first two weeks and seeing the traffic that my store was doing they put me in an ad for the mall on the movie screen before all the movies oh that's fantastic i don't pay for a penny of it oh that's awesome that's killer i will tell you this also the i can't i can't tell you the price because it's in my contract but i can't but i could tell you if i told you the price You'd shit yourself right now <laughs> um, because the malls are really looking to be revitalized. They want to find that unique vision for their mall and they're wheeling, wheeling and dealing and ready to make deals. The only thing with them is you need to, you need to get a long term because when, when it all turns around, <laughs> they'll be like, this is the reset period, but the second Whatever the Jack White is of the future, yep. maybe it's Justin Bieber, maybe it's Greta Thunberg. I don't know who's a kid anymore. Uh, right. Maybe it's maybe it's this little girl who was in Thor: Love and Thunder. She becomes the the Jodie Foster of the future. You know, best filmmaker and all that. Right, right. And and they go, you know where I got my start? I got my start going to a comic book store. Yeah, yeah. And and all of their little Twitter followers or Snapchatters or TikTokers or whatever all start running out to find it. And, and I wrote my first comic book and it's in these comic book stores right now. Well, what and we don't, we're going to actually add, we're going to actually add some um, art classes. We have a guy who worked in comics for a while and uh, he's going to come and give some art classes to bring kids in. We have another you know, play space for magic. It's not being used all the time. Their desks, so they can they can do their art and uh, just get a projector for him and 
away we go yeah. with that. It, it, it's it's another event. It's another reason that the kids are here. And you know, it, they won't be comic books won't be thrown at them where like you have to buy them or you have. There's no, uh, there's nothing they need to do other than enjoy the class. But it's right. a memory that they make, right? That's the other thing. If you can tie this to to good memories, it's. Yeah. It's like big. I said, I know the grocery store. I know the comic book. The first time a comic yep. touched my hand, I know that there was a handful of change on a note from my mother. That's something that stuck with me. I know the smell of the ferret at the first comic book store I went to that was allowed to run around the comic book store and chew on the little white boxes uh, <laughs> cut its teeth. I know the smell of that ferret in my first comic book store. Right. You know what I'm saying? People remember that stuff. I remember I had a kid that came in to sell me Yu-Gi-Oh cards. My first week of being open at my first store in 2005. That kid came up to me 10 years later. He's like, Mr. Barger, I don't know if you remember me. I'm Billy. I, I sold you some Yu-Gi-Oh cards and you told me that my cards were too beat up. Uh, and that I needed to buy sleeves and I got the sleeves and now I have this giant collection of this stuff and that stuff and I just sold a card for a hundred dollars that I got you know, and I'm like wow that's the kind of impact we can have on people that's the impact my mom on that change on the table that's the impact of lost boys with me you know uh your your the kids that are going to come in and learn art from your store we have to understand our power in this industry. Absolutely. And, and I said this when they had that Michael Uslan's kid sitting up on stage at the San Diego Comic-Con one year trying to get us to use Diamond Digital to sell digital comics to our customers so that <laughs> our customers would give them their email address so they could just cut us out whenever they wanted. I right. said, the one thing Diamond has no access to and the one thing the publishers have no access to. Our customers our customers it's the most valuable resource in this entire industry yeah and they have to go through us to get it yeah so uh what i want to get into a little bit is um with your business model and being in the mall you're sourcing and how do you source and about what like so here i i give my thing away all the time i pay 40 percent of key for key issues and i pay 15 cents to 30 cents for bulk depending on whether it's bagged or boarded or not. Uh, if you bring in long boxes, if you want me to take the time to go through it, uh, and like I do free appraisals, um, and then that's the way it goes. So, and people are like 40%, like shouldn't it be 50-50 the owner? I'm like, listen, I gotta give eBay 20% if I can't move it in my store. So now I've paid 60% and he's only got 40%, but I've, all, I've also paid 60%. So he's actually beaten. Well, yeah, I've got a couple. Uh, so there, you know, I've been buying. I, I my old saying is, if you're not buying, you're dying. Dying. In this business. Amen, brother. Uh, you know, uh, I bought when I didn't have half the money I needed to buy it when I right. uh, bought it. Um, however, my my principle is that you had better be wearing your best goddamn game face if you try to fuck over somebody selling you shit. Right. So when I source, I source what I know I can sell. Right. And I source it at a very high price. And I like to play a game, and I played it a couple times here in my new store. And it's 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 unfair because. Um, I only play this game when I know I'm going to give them lots of money and I kind of want to see the look on their face. I call it the <laughs> post-it note game. And so I look through the box and I'm like, oh, this entire long box of 200 comic books that are all 1980s to early 90s newsstand variants because this town didn't have a comic book store. So all these yeah. comics were bought off a newsstand and they're all in bags and boards and they're all like 9294 ish and okay, there's a couple non key Spider Mans, and there's a couple. Oh, here's a first Jubilee uh, that's a 9 2. Maybe it's worth about 100 bucks, you know, if I get it graded. And I go through the whole box and I'm like, wow, this is about a six to nine hundred dollar box if I just break this thing up. Um, and I'm like, okay, let's play the post it note game. 
And he goes, okay, what's that? I go, I give you a post-it note and a Sharpie and you write what you want or what you think I'm gonna give you. And then I'm gonna write on my post-it note what I'm gonna give you. And then we can decide which post-it note and we can negotiate which post-it notes the deal. Okay. And he writes on his little post-it note and I write on my little post-it note. And then I'm like, all right, and go. And mine says $300. And he opens his up and his says $30. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so which one do you want? Uh, um, uh, 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 I'll, I'll take yours. Uh, seriously? I'm like, yeah, so you want you want the 300. You don't want the 30? I'll, I'll give you the 30 if you want the 30, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you the 300 because that's what I wrote on my post note. And that's the kind of stuff, and I'm not going to throw any but retailers under the bus, but I know too many fucking retailers that are like, Oh yeah, man. I bought this long box for $20 and I fucked that guy good. He had a thousand uh, dollar copy of this in there. Why? Why do you need to do that? Right. If you can turn it, if you can turn it, you should pay for it. Um, I do buy a lot of stuff sight unseen because people don't want to hang loose. Like I buy from a, right. So I buy from a lot of guys who are doing clean outs and are guys who are doing um, storage buildings. They'll just come in and go, I got eight long boxes. Give me 200 bucks. And I'm like, okay, I don't even know if they're full. I'll tell you a time I actually did screw a customer. A uh, guy calls up and he's like, yeah, what do you pay for uh, 1970s comic books? I go, well, our, our average price is about 25 cents a piece for those. Uh, you know, it just depends on the condition. He goes, okay, okay, I'll bring them right up. And he brings in four big Rubbermaid totes. And he opens them up, starts putting them on the table. He goes, yeah, I just want to make sure you're going to pay me 25 cents, at, at least 25 cents. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I start counting them out and I'm just putting the good stuff over here. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 129, Amazing Spider-Man 121, uh, Batman uh, 351, blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm putting them here. Oh, oh, there's a, you know, uh, 181, okay. I'm going through, oh, there's a 180. And he goes, and I have my employee, Devin, counting out stacks of 50. To, so we can count up all the bulk at the end. Because I'm, I need to know. Hey, hey, that last stack didn't have 50 in it. Oh, uh, did he, how many did, he goes, uh, I don't think he put 50 in that one. And I'm like, if he put 49 and I counted as 50, you make an extra book, you dipshit. <laughs> he goes, count it again. Like he's being some kind of like fucking, I'm like, okay. And Devin counts him out. One, two, three, stops everything. I got a stack of like a hundred books over here that I'm going to pay you thousands of dollars for. <laughs> 49, 50. It came out to 50 exactly. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. I just thought he was trying to cheat me. <laughs> so I said, okay. And then I slid the books, the 181 and the 129 and all. I slid that, the giant size X-Men number one. I slid all that over for Devin to keep counting into stacks of 50. Yeah. And you know what? I don't feel bad about that because the guy was a fucking asshole. I, just <laughs> wait until I'm fucking done to tell you because I guarantee you my post-it note was way more than you thought you were going to fucking get at 25 cents yeah. a piece. Yeah. And he got exactly 25 cents a piece for his entire fucking collection. Yeah. Those home runs are nice. I usually get them through yeah. blind boxes. I love the blind. I love when people bring them in and just say, hey, will you give me this? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. So, because yeah. I do, whole, I wholesale some books off. I wholesale books off. So... You know, I pull the stuff I need for my walls. And stuff. Wash, but everybody finds out who the asshole is in town. Uh, and, you know, and I remember one of the worst ones was a guy brought in a collection. He brings in a, a long box and it's missing every key. Right. And it's a Spider-Man collection. I know where the keys were. You know, and it's like, oh, did you have this? Did you have that? Did you have this? I, yeah, all of these are missing. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I sold those at the store up the road. Yeah. I'm like, and what did they give you for all of those books? A hundred dollars. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I can tell you right now, this box I'll buy for 50. 
if this box had that other those other books in there, I'd be giving you close to a thousand. Yeah. And I don't mind dummy enough to mark. I I make nothing off of him screwing somebody. No. I tell people when when they come in and bring me stuff, I have a simple rule. I buy collections. I don't buy onesies and twosies. I'm not gonna cherry pick you and send you on the road with the bulk. I want the bulk. I can move it. I want everything because I'll I'll pay up for the good stuff and actually end up making my money on the bulk. Right? That's where I'll actually make the, you know, 300 books at a dollar a piece, $300. If I'm paying, you know, $50, $60 for a bulk box, you know, I'm making four times, five times the money. I, I, I it, absolutely. And now those bulk boxes aren't even bulk. That's my inventory. Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. Because now I've got, I had a basement full. I've been able to wholesale some of it off, but I still have stuff I can't even fit in my shop. I have 3,000 square feet and I can't fit it all in here. I'm, I'm, I'm at 1,500 square feet and I'm pulling down numbers like that. I can't believe it. Wow. Yeah, that's great. But, but Emmett, this is the year to rethink everything. Oh yeah. I know. I see that. I mean, I, we've pivoted a lot in the seven years. We originally had a flood. We were in a small spot. We moved into this bigger spot. I was selling every, I was selling a lawnmower. If I could get a lawnmower cheap, I had it out front for sale. And then I, I, sold, a then skateboard. I, I sold a skateboard that came in in a collection in, the, in my front window. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I'll buy anything. If I can turn a buck on it, it may not be on the floor anymore. We've kind of like really focused on the actual collectible market. But uh, you know, if, Somebody comes in and says, hey, I did a clean out. Here's the comics, but you want to look look at any of this other stuff? Yeah, because like I can throw it up on eBay or I can throw it up uh, on uh, Facebook Marketplace now has been killing it. Think about all the stuff that five years ago had no market. Sports yeah, cards, yeah. no market five years ago. Boom. Yeah. Uh, Pokemon cards were starting to lose their market. Boom. Yep. DVDs, boom. VHS. Boom. Oh, boom. VHS is Every huge. comic book. How many, how many of the top 10 list and the uh, top nine, eight values are 90s comics? X-Men oh. 1, X-Men 4, newsstand this, newsstand that. Yeah. It's all cyclic, and that's what people don't understand. And that, I will tell you, for my now 32 years from going into that kaleidoscope store with that shoebox full of Star Wars comics, to being on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, to being a booking agent for celebrities, to owning a comic book store, to now owning a retro comic book store, to being an Amazon seller for 12 years. I have the knowledge to tell people everything comes back around. And yeah. when, oh, I missed this. I better dump this and get rid of it. Just wait, kids. Just wait. Just wait. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I can't believe, I thought, I do believe in the cyclical and always have, but I thought sports cards were done, really done. And uh, here's the thing. They're not even done, done yet. Cause right. the market's back down, but all markets are back down. But here's the thing. Michael Jordan hasn't died. Scottie right. Pippen hasn't died. Ken Griffey Jr. Hasn't died. You know what? And I'm not saying let's, let's go kill those guys so we can make sure the market. <laughs> um, but what I'm saying is, is, Whatever the market has dipped and then came back, it's still not the bottom. And then guess yeah. what? Mickey Mantle. How many people are left alive that even knew Mickey Mantle ever played? Very few. Okay. But that's the number, that's the action comics number one. Right. Right now. It's not, nobody, uh, I mean, I'm sure, you know, Honus Wagner is still the number one card. It's the action comics, maybe. I don't know. But, the Mickey Mantle is definitely the Batman number one or the yeah. Amazing Fantasy 15. And then you look at the the Ken Griffey or the um, Michael Jordan rookie is probably closer to like a Venom number one <clears throat> or, or more like a Wolverine, you know, Hulk 181. You start doing parallels to that and then you watch how that translates to all this other stuff. And it's all, it, they, the, all of these graphs, like I said, records, record stores, hippie record store, comic books, you know, they all follow tracks. And you have to be 
a lunatic like me, <laughs> like like in uh, sunny in Philadelphia with the the big strings all over the place. <laughs> You, you don't need strings all over the place. It's so easy to track when you are paying attention. Right. Well, I definitely do make a, a, a much better margin on anything I've bought used than any new book I've ever bought. Every once in a while, Boom really helps us out with those one for stores. You know, yeah. um, when Marvel was doing secret variants, that was, a, that was a boon. Like just a little, it was just like a little, here you go, here's a little gimme. You know, it was something I could give sus- subscribers. To them all, though, Robert Kirkman has, is the best to any of us that any yeah. body in his position has ever yeah. been. Kirkman, yeah. he, I don't know what that guy, but he was the best. He invited us to the first big, giant Hollywood Walking Dead party in San Diego. He took us to breakfast every year at San Diego by himself and then bought us drinks when he stopped doing breakfast. You know, and then... COVID hits and he's like, hey guys, you guys want a free comic book? Here, just sell these yeah. for whatever, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, did you buy my other book? Okay, here's a whole bunch of copies of that for free too. Thanks, yeah. for, thanks for existing, guys. I hope you guys are around when I make another comic book. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's all I want. That's really all I want. You know, I I it should be a partnership. It's a really a business to business partnership. That the, it's only one way. Valued retail partners. That's the first yeah. thing they say when they get up there to tell us what they need us to buy. Yeah. Yep. But Kirkman actually puts the pedal where the metal is, or whatever the phrase is. Yeah, I think there are some guys in India if they were had a little bit more, uh, if they had the kind of money that he's got, would probably be in for it too, because they they right. do they really do love the business and they love the the art form, yeah. the true art form, literary and an art form of uh, comics. You know, I really want to thank you for coming on and letting us know about, because that's what this show's about. What's going on? What, what are people doing in their business models and how are they making it in today's world and where small businesses are getting crushed all the time? And we're, um, I know for a fact that we've lost a few retailers in the last couple of weeks. Can I tell you one more, sure, one more sure. tale? So, on or around 2015, I don't. I remember the summit, but I can't remember the year. It was a Vegas retailer summit. It's the one where I got into the fight with the guy from uh, what's the stupid comics? Comics Pro. Pro. Uh, yeah. It was the year Dave Gall was the Comics Pro president, and I got into a fight with him at the retailer summit. It happens. Um, so I'm wandering around all of these retailers, like, gimme, 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 gimme. I want freebies, freebie, freebie, freebie. Yeah. And, and Image, the guy at Image, and I'm not going to tell you his name, uh, was sitting there at the table by himself. And the guy over at Marvel, he wasn't giving any free books away except for the ones that, you know, they get in the baggie at the end. So right. nobody was talking to him. So I sat down with the guy at Image, um, and I'm like, hey, I got a question for you. How many retailers are there? Like I said, this is 2015, 2016-ish. I can't remember the year, so don't quote me on it. And don't, you know, you right. um, And it's whatever year Dave Gall was the president of Comics Pro. And uh, he's like, oh, that's a good question, Dennis. He, go, he, he turned it into a game. He goes, Dennis, how many comic book stores do you think order? And uh, which way did he go? Hold on, I gotta, I gotta think this out. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't expect to tell this story. <laughs> he goes, how many comic book stores do you think order one copy of The Walking Dead, the comic book? Fifteen hundred. One copy, fifteen hundred. There's gotta be fifteen hundred stores that order one copy of The Walking Dead. Right. Like, about eleven hundred. Like, wow. But Diamond says there's 1,500 accounts. And, or that says there's 2,000 accounts. Like the Diamond, Chris Chris Powell says there's 2,000 accounts. And and when you when you talk to them about Free Comic Book Day, there's always 1,500 participants for Free Comic Book Day. Uh, and, and, and you just think to yourself, well, maybe those 500 stores that don't participate in Free Comic Book Day are just stupid or something. And now this guy says uh, 1,100 people order one copy of The Walking Dead. And he goes, 
that, and that's just one copy. A lot of those only order the one copy. And this was like I said, 2015. Walking Dead was a little bit of a hit. I think they were selling about 75,000 a month at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he goes, here's a better question for you, Dennis. How many people do you think, how many accounts at Diamond do you think order one copy of Walking Dead? And I, I forget the volume number, so forgive me. Walking Dead, volume 22. Because that was the current volume that was just yeah. out or whatever the number was. And I'm like, well, I mean, it's got to be 900, right? I mean, there's, I sell like 20 of those. I, I buy 20 of every volume that comes out. Of every volume. Yeah, it's like, because I'm, I'm going to sell 10, you know, off the get. And I'm going to sell another five over the next month. And, you know, I know what my numbers are. What's what's the rest of the industry's number? He goes, it's it's a little more than 500 stores. Order a, a copy. One copy of Walking Dead Volume 22. Yeah. Now, he goes, there's a thousand accounts that order Walking Dead Volume 1. And and they just, you know, that's the one, they just buy the one copy and they just put it out there. And and there's only, at that time, 500 and some odd stores bought Walking Dead Volume 22. So what that tells me, <clears throat> there's 2,000 accounts. There's... 1,500 participants at Free Comic Book Day who probably just order enough so they can sell on eBay or whatever they're doing with them. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, now that they allow digital accounts. There's 1,100 regular comic stores and club accounts where people are like, I just want to buy my Walking Dead at a slightly wholesale price because I don't want to go to Emmett or Dennis's to try right. to get it at 20% off when I can buy it from Diamond at 35 Right. And that means to me, honestly, and I'm not trying to like fake geek girl or you're not a real fan or right, right. But if your comic store is not ordering the current volume of Walking Dead at the height of Walking Dead, you're not I a don't think you're a real comic book store. No, 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 you're not. Yeah, I, I sold I sold my Walking Dead very differently. My Walking Dead, I would buy 10 issues. I would sell two, but then I would put them in the back bins and people always came in and then bought 10 issues because they didn't come in every month. They weren't monthly yeah. buyers. They were fans of the show. That's right. uh, that's same thing with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. That's how I sell those books. We call them, I call them property books. Somewhere between 500 and 1,000 real comic book stores. Yeah. And, and to me, that means there's probably and, and I don't know if you ever saw that Diamond Marvel leaked email list of accounts and volumes. No, I didn't. That happened. Oh, yeah, that's you got to look that one up online and uh, dig in on that one. That one, I found out real good who was above me and who was below me at a point in time when I was barely buying comic books. And I'm like, oh, you think you're a big shot, do you? <laughs> I'm buying more than you and I don't own a store. Right. There's a lot of stuff that's all smoke and mirrors in this industry. And like I said, I kind of blew away a lot of the smoke and I, I found out something I probably shouldn't have found out. And I'm sure somebody at Diamond or Lunar or Penguin or somebody's going to put a laser point on my back and, and splatter me on this monitor. <laughs> because if, if the retailers find out how easy it is, this idiot the biggest mouth in comic books figured out a way to make 10 G's a month selling the shit that you guys all have boxed up in the back on those little long boxes. Right. That's awesome, man. Like I said, I really appreciate you coming by. Let everybody know where they can keep it up. I, and, and I also Thank want to buy those monster high dolls. All right. Well, then it's like mostly accessory stuff, but I'll send you pictures. I'll send you pictures. Um, right. My daughter loves that shit. Awesome. Um, so let everybody know where they can get a hold of you and uh, how they can buy from your shop. Wonder World Comics. Wonder World Comics. Uh, that's, I, I believe there's two stores, but I'm the one in Michigan. Okay. Uh, my YouTube channel, I just started putting content back up after a little hiatus because I've been running this new store called What's Moving with D. Every day I show you what I sell on uh, Amazon and eBay. So you awesome. can get a, a gist of what I sell and the prices I sell it. And then now... Now that I've been on yours, I've been 
uh, kind of motivated to do kind of what you do, but just explaining what my business model is a little more in depth and kind of, uh, so I'm going to be doing some more YouTube videos. So YouTube is the big place to follow me and at DL Barger is my Instagram. You can find lots of pictures of the fun stuff I do. Yeah. There. Yeah. I, I saw a lot of your pictures from the con, man. It was great. Yes. All right, man. Have a good night. Thanks a lot for coming. You too, Emmett. Thanks for having me on. Take care. Okay, so as soon as one of uh, my videos on Tales from the Flip Side reaches 1,000 views, that's going to start triggering um, giveaways. And then so for every other uh, video that makes 1,000 views, there'll be another giveaway. When the first video makes 2,000 views, that'll trigger a giveaway. So the number's 1,000. We're only 300 views away from the very first video that we put here on Tales from the Flip Side. So here's what you gotta do. You gotta go back to the first uh, video and hit the share button, right? If you didn't like it, hit the like button. If you wanted to, uh, didn't put in a comment, put a comment in. Something that's gonna move us in the algorithm back up there so we can get to a thousand views so, so I can start giving away some really cool free comic books and probably some toys and some other jank stuff we'll find. We'll uh, dig in the, you know, uh, some Scott Snyder signed stuff, some Sean Lewis signed stuff, uh, some Brian O'Halloran from Clerks 3 signed stuff. Maybe we'll give away, I got, a, I got a movie in the back. I'll get Brian to sign a movie. Listen, we're gonna give away cool stuff, so stay tuned and keep watching.